um, we are uh, happy to be joined today by Kelsey Hulse. Uh, she is running uh, for Thurston County Commissioner in District 2, I believe, if I got that right. Um, I did get it right. She's nodding her head. <laughs> and uh, we're excited to have her to get today. Uh, she's a great progressive candidate. Um, as Katie Nelson, the Thurston County Democrats chair said, um, you Bernie Kratz, she said, you're looking for young progressive candidates. And we have uh, uh, some great ones here in Thurston County, including Kelsey Holst and Jim Cooper, who we're going to have on next week, who's uh, running for the other Thurston County commissioner position. Now, start it off, if you could, uh, Forrest Kelsey, and just tell us what made you want to to run for this and explain to us a little bit about what you did before you were county commissioner, because I, I do believe that's interesting as well. Uh, sure. So I have been involved in nonprofit fundraising for about the last five years. Most recently or currently, I work for the Evergreen State College. Uh, and so I do fundraising for scholarships there. Yeah, I see Adair pumping his fist. Big fan of Evergreen. Um, prior to that, I led the capital campaign for our local food bank, the Thurston County Food Bank. So we raised three and a half million dollars to expand the capacity to serve the community there. Um, and I think that that, particularly that experience at the food bank was really formative for me in terms of uh, really seeing that there were still a lot of families in our community that were struggling. Uh, at the same time, our local food bank has more than 8,000 volunteers that turn up every year. Uh, so there's a huge capacity also for caring and a willingness to, within this community to roll up your sleeves and get to work and get stuff done uh, to benefit our friends and neighbors. So I think that that both um, gave me a perspective on some of the challenges that we're facing, but also the capacity that we have to really make change and make a difference here. Um, in terms of why I got into this race specifically, it was really thinking about, well, it was, it was kind of two things. It was thinking about the fact that we've got a lot of growth projected for this community. And so we're gonna be making some choices in the near future that are really gonna impact generations of people that'll live that live here. And so if we want to protect the quality of life that we that we have, and a big part of that is our natural environment, then we're going to have to make those choices now. Um, so that was really compelling uh, to me in terms of getting into the race. And I was going to make another point and I lost it. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, it's okay because um, um, maybe we could just go in a different direction here real quick. Sure. Because one great thing that I have heard when I've talked to people about you and Jim both and why they should support you, you know, pardon my French here, but they look at me and say, what the hell is a county commissioner? And I think it's a very important yeah. position. And I would love uh, for you to help us educate our viewers and uh, we'll be able to share this out afterwards um, to educate people on what a county commissioner is, what the importance of the job is, and maybe explain why you are better suited and, and your vision for the position is better than the uh, vision of your opponents. Sure. Um, so county commissions are sort of funny entities and they, they're not all the same is one thing I want to mention. So I'll, I'll talk a little bit about Thurston County's commission and while lots of counties in Washington are similar to Thurston County, there's also many counties that aren't, right? And primarily counties that have larger populations. So for instance, in Thurston County, we have a three commissioner um, board that is both the legislative and budgetary authority for the county. That is, as I said, common in many counties, but once a county population gets above 300,000, I believe that that board turns into a five person board. Um, there are also various charters and, and different things that have been pursued in different counties, which create different um, governing bodies. So you'll see that in counties like particularly King County, which is obviously much larger. Um, so primary roles are as a legislative and budgetary authority. Um, the county itself provides a whole variety of services, of course, and those kind of fit into three different buckets. One is services that are, are um, provided across the county, right? So whether you live in the city or you live in an unincorporated area, the, the county is the entity that provides um, you know, auditor services, right? So anything that has to do with voting, for instance, or the assessor that, that will assess your property and um, levy property taxes. The coroner, for instance, the county clerk, um, those are all things that, like I said, regardless where you live in this county, those services are provided by the county. There are also 
Another bucket is services that are provided to the unincorporated county specifically. So everybody that lives outside of, um, of one of the cities in Thurston County. And those are things like uh, roads and bridges, water, wastewater, stormwater, um, any sort of uh, services, infrastructure improvements that have to do with those things all fall to the county. And then the third piece is uh, intergovernmental or interjurisdictional work or um, interjurisdictional bodies that county commissioners serve on. So those are things like uh, here in Thurston County, we have a wastewater utility that's called the Lot Alliance. And so a county commissioner mm -hmm. serves on the Lot Alliance board. Um, same thing with inner city transit, which is our, our transportation authority here. So, uh, and there's a whole variety of those. So the, the thing that's sometimes tough to understand is that the county does do a whole bunch of different things, right? And they have their, their hands, you know, it's everything from, like I said, those assessor, uh, type responsibilities, levying property taxes, collecting property taxes, those kinds of things, all the way down to, you know, they are the administrator of the county fair and they take care of the noxious weed program. So uh, there's really a whole breadth of, of things that they do, which I think is what makes it challenging for people to really, um, to really understand and get involved with the work of their county governments. So I, I know that you, you've done a lot of uh, campaign events and, uh, I've seen a, a lot of different events that you were doing. So can you tell us a little bit about the feel that you've had um, from, from people, both supporters or maybe people who uh, aren't looking to support your campaign? What, what is the type of reactions, both negative and positive, that you've had um, with your campaign so far? Sure, and we've done a variety of campaign events. We've also been knocking on a lot of doors. Um, so we, we're reaching people that way as well. Uh, the, the response that we've gotten, I would say, has been I don't want to say overwhelmingly positive, you know, I want to <laughs> make sure I'm um, not getting, I don't know, I suppose overconfident, but that doesn't make sense. Anyway, um, the response has been really positive. Uh, for the most part, it seems like people are eager to see new faces. They're eager to see uh, younger people getting involved in the political process, although at the same time, I hear on a regular basis that I'm just too young for this. Um, so, you know, mostly positive. I think when I run into somebody who is uh, not positive about my race or, or me as a candidate, it tends to be, I mean, either, you know, A, it's, I've had several people at the door say, well, are you voting for Donald Trump? Um, so that conversation yeah. really doesn't go well. But, um, but for the most part, it's folks that are really uh, angry or frustrated with the county that have had interactions in the past that have really frustrated them, uh, made them feel like either they, they haven't been heard, uh, that the county doesn't represent them, doesn't care about them. Uh, a lot of those issues are surrounding sort of land use and permitting, but um, those are the things that, you know, when I talk to somebody about something that hasn't gone well, or, or when I talk to somebody who is really um, eager for dramatic change in the county, it's usually because of one of those issues. And I apologize for the You'll hear noise in the background. I'm actually sitting here at the uh, Democrats headquarters in Thurston County. I, I couldn't get home from work in time for this, so I uh, apologize for that. Um, but yeah, so so it has really we've had a really positive response. Like I said, there what's going on right now in Thurston County that's as I understand it happening in other parts of the world as well, or other parts of the country as well, is that we've had a um, you know fairly democratic progressive board of commissioners in the past. And so what's actually going on at the moment is there's there's sort of a concerted effort by um, by conservatives or by Republicans in the county, which tend to fall into the minority, to sort of um, take hold of this, this governing entity um, primarily around, you know, the interests are primarily around land use and how do we, I think the, the the struggle is over how much land should be opened up for development, essentially, and what people should be able to do with their, their private property. Yeah, that's uh, the land use thing is very important, I think, especially with uh, mm -hmm. a lot of concerns about climate change. And that that is a big concern, I know, especially for the Thurston County community. Um, so I, I had one more question for you, and then I'm going to kick it off to Adair so he can ask you a few questions as well. Um, sure. But one thing um, in doing a little research recently, and kind of from my own experience, I, I knew this from my own experience, is that there's a problem in Thurston County 
that's uh, much larger than most people would expect. And that's people being below the poverty line. We're way more of an impoverished area than a lot of people would expect uh, from the outside appearance, I guess. You wouldn't guess that people are struggling financially as hard as they really are. And some of the numbers that I've read and seen are astronomical. Um, what do you think we can do uh, or what can you do as a commissioner to kind of um, affect uh, change in terms of the poverty level in Thurston County and uh, what what things would your opponent do that could uh, maybe hurt that? Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think the thing, one of the things that we really have to um, have to start doing is having, you know, courageous conversations is sort of an overused term sometimes, but but really having conversations about what is it that causes people to to be or remain in poverty? What is it that keeps them uh, impoverished? And what can we do to move them out of that situation? I mean, you know, working at the food bank was one of the things that I did there was try and work the intake window at least once a week to get a chance to talk to and get to know some of the, the folks that we served. And the reality is that it's a whole variety of different things. But in many cases, the, the cost or what it would take to get these folks on a, on a path to independence or on a path to um, you know, self-reliance is, is often very little. There just isn't the political will to do it. And so I think having, having practical conversations around what can we do to help. The other piece is obviously there's, you know, as I said, the, the um, county commissioners are the budgetary authority. And so there's only so much money to go around. Uh, and so really uh, making sure that our budgetary decisions reflect our values as a community and as a county, uh, which to me, one of those values is really taking care of our friends and neighbors and making sure that um, making sure that, that is one of our top priorities. And so the, the concern for me is if I'm running against someone who uh, will advocate for putting more money into, for instance, the sheriff's office because he's a former sheriff. Um, but that has to come from somewhere, right? So if we're not going to raise revenue, which is also something that, that um, my opponent as well as Jim's opponent are against, then uh, where does that money come from? And oftentimes it comes at the expense of these programs that don't have strong, powerful advocates for them, right? Because the people that they benefit are the small in the community. Um, and so that was a big fear. Working at the food bank, we had a great example of that. There's a, a program that the county uh, administers and pays for that basically provides a refrigerated van that can pick up food for the food bank. Very low cost, right? Doesn't doesn't cost much. It would be easy to see somebody sort of striking that out of a out of a budget to try and save some money. But the reality is that 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 van allows the food bank to rescue over a million pounds of fresh food to be redistributed to folks in our community. So it's a tiny investment that yields this huge return in terms of um, social services and resources redirected to those who, who most need them. And so that was one thing that I wanted to make sure uh, didn't happen, right? That we weren't, we weren't making those uh, choices that were going to make things even harder for either the people that are currently living in poverty or the organizations that are trying to serve them. The other piece is that I think we need to look around because we do have both in our county, we have programs that are working really, really well that aren't fully funded, right? Mm -hmm. Why is that? We know it works, it's been effective. You know, let, so let's have a conversation around what does it cost to fully fund that and how do we get that done in the short term? Because, um, because we know it's a, an answer for part of the problem, right? It doesn't fix everything, but it's a piece of it. Uh, and beyond our county, you know, there are communities in, in this country too, but you know, there's a, there were a couple examples in Canada of communities that have reached functional zero homelessness, right? This is not rocket science. People sure. know how to do these things. So let's look for those best practices and think, how do we, how do we put those in play here in Thurston County to serve the, the folks that are counting on us? Yeah, I think the food bank is, is so important and so undervalued in uh, our community. I, I will say that for my family personally, we were heavily dependent on the food bank um, and similar programs. Um, and so it, it's really disappointing um, that someone would, uh, that, that your opponent would uh, uh, proposition putting more funding into uh, 
policing when frankly it seems like that's probably already pretty set in our area um, and taking that away from families that are in need. But I don't want to hog you this whole time. I know Adair is also eager to ask some questions to you. Um, so I am going to pass it on to Adair here.